Oh god, I don't even know what to say. Let me like think this over for a second. Hey guys, it's Jordan Jones and Sleepy Matcha over here, back at it again with a new episode. In today's episode, we'll be talking about breaking up with your boyfriend, focusing on yourself, and how to handle a heartbreak. So let's just get on with today's episode. First question of today's episode is, what's been your most memorable thing that's happened in 2023? what was the most memorable thing because it's 2024 now and the first thing I did think of was buying my mom a truck I got her a Raptor my boyfriend has one and some of my friends in LA have them and it's just like the coolest thing so I fell in love with them and I had gotten my mom a Range Rover and I leased it for three years Mother's Day in covid so her lease was up and i just wanted to go ahead and buy her a truck that she's going to love to have in michigan and the snow and the rain and all the seasons it's perfect she loves it that was pretty memorable i would say another thing i can think of is honestly my birthday my trip i went on i turned 23 and i had a cool dinner at my boyfriend's house (laughs) with like all my friends and family and then he and I went on a trip for the week up to Northern California road trip and stayed at the coolest places we just did so many things also my cat is here but she's sleeping she is so cute do you guys see that I think the year before I like hated my birthday so those two things were definitely memorable for me How do I break up with my boyfriend even though I don't have a reason? Well, it kind of seems like wanting to break up with him is a reason in itself. I mean, if you don't want to be with someone, you just need to be honest. And if you're worried about how the other person's going to feel, just think about how much worse it would be if you continued it and how much deeper they'd fall in love with you and how much more sad the breakup would be if you delayed it. So being honest, having a conversation, just being like, you know, it is hard to bring up a conversation about this and it's really hard when you just know the person doesn't feel the same way because it's probably what's happening i would say something like i know that this probably is coming out of nowhere and i just want to be honest with you it's sad but i just really don't see like a future with you and i know that someone out there will treat you better then I treat you and will love you more than I love you. As much as I loved our time together, it's best for me right now if I am alone. Like I need to do some healing. I need to find myself. I want to stay friends with you if you can allow me that. I'm sorry like for hurting you and letting this continue, but I think it's for the best obviously not a good conversation to have with anybody whether something good has happened bad has happened you guys have been together for a year or way longer breakups are going to be hard and i just think that it's better to end it at that first thought because it can just get worse and the sooner you say something the sooner she can go move on and be alone and you know someone will treat her nicer and better and everything like that so you know, if you're not doing it for yourself, do it for that person because they don't deserve that. No one deserves to be half loved. So if you're feeling not 100% in, I always say this, but it's just better to be honest. It's really hard though. Like actually having that conversation, I don't even know how that would go, but good luck. Be honest and on to the next question. This one is a good segue. How to focus on yourself. Um, I feel like my whole life I've been like catering to other people and I'm a Pisces. I'm a fixer. I'm a family girl. I'm a gift giver. I'm a yes man. There's been so many times where I feel like I've done something for someone knowing like I'll never get anything in return. And that's not why I do anything. I was thinking about this the other day. Let's say my friend's dad passed away and I sent her flowers for, you know, her dad's like death anniversary. I know no one will ever do something like that for me, I feel like. 
I've decided now to do those things for myself that I would be doing for other people. Even if I do those things or I don't do those things for other people, I wanna reward like myself and make myself feel good and not rely on other people to do those things for me or make me happy and like feel all these emotions. That's something I wanted to like do this year more so. Whatever I want to be doing for someone else, I love ordering people food when they're sad and sending things to the house, buying people flowers, just making someone feel like appreciated. People do do that for me, but I don't know. I just need to do more things like that for myself. And that's me focusing on myself and not so much worrying about everyone else's ups and downs. What about me and my ups and downs who's gonna pick me up i have to like be there for myself and that's something i'm focusing on this year other ways obviously are just spending more time with yourself and journaling making sure that you're being authentic on social media because it's hard to focus on yourself be true to yourself when you're not doing that to other people and on social media and your friends so just staying true to yourself is a way of focusing on yourself and then Last little tag I'll mention is making time for self-care and everything kind of goes along with journaling. But if I'm tired, I'll just go to bed and then I'm not focusing on my self-care, cleaning my apartment and putting my clothes away and just making sure that everything around me is in line because then I am good. If everything is a mess and if your car is a mess and your apartment is a mess and you haven't done laundry, that is show how you are on the inside, basically. So this year, clean up and get your priorities straight and focus on your self-care and all of that will in turn be focusing on yourself. So that was a lot, but I hope it helps. <laughs> how do you know if he's talking to other girls? Um, I've seen so many TikToks about this like recently. I don't know if you guys know the girl who used to do like all the relationship advice. She dated her boyfriend for like eight years and she just broke up and it was like a big thing and she made a couple of videos about it and I always watched her advice videos and she would basically like talk about this and other things. She made a video about this kind of and she was saying checking their phone obviously. If a guy doesn't give you his phone, is weird when you even touch it or is always face down and you wanted to look at something on his phone and he's like over your shoulder and being weird about it that's a really good sign that there's like something on it that he doesn't want you to see i mean i get it like i don't really want people touching my phone but if my boyfriend's like let me look at this email that you got from say Le labo because i got him a christmas present i would just be like oh like here if i'm in a relationship you basically like have full access to my phone. And if your boyfriend has been like that before and then now has kind of changed up, he puts his phone under his pillow, brings it in the shower, all this stuff is, I guess, a good sign that there's something he doesn't want you to see. I mean, probably if he goes out to clubs and bars without you, that's a good sign that he's talking to other girls. It's obviously like a trust thing. And some girls, you know, say if a certain situation has happened before, she's not going to trust you out. A lot of guys will be like, oh, I don't want you to go to the bar. And then like guys will go just like kind of weird. Um, I mean, I would say like Snapchat, but I... I don't really know how or why or like where to look for that kind of thing on Snap. Instagram, DMs, if he's weird with that, or I don't even really know. My friend's friend just got a DM from a girl being like, hey girly, like I just saw your boyfriend at this bar and I recognized him and I took this picture of him making out with this other girl. I'm just thinking of like how she got that DM about it, but that's technically not him talking to other girls. It's literally like him kissing other girls and she wouldn't have ever found that out, which is crazy. I don't know. I feel like the main thing is just like how he deals with his phone, different email accounts and Reddit. I guess you're supposed to check that. I don't have Twitter. I don't really think people really talk to other people on Twitter like that, but probably just Instagram if they're liking some girl's, you know, Instagram pictures and he doesn't really know her. Obviously, they had to talk at some point and they both follow each other and then it kind of just makes you connect some dots. I don't know. I hope I never have to like deal with this in my relationship. Oh, were you too hot over there? Yeah, you were too hot. That is so cute. If you're thinking about it, if you're like, oh, I wonder if he's talking to other girls, I've seen this and seen that. If you're having these like doubts and feeling and intuition, 
it kind of does like suck and most of the time it's true and trust your intuition but because my boyfriend and i have full access to each other's phones i already like trust that if he like changes password took like my face off of it i would obviously be weird about it imagine if i like change my password he's gonna change your password like what for like what's on there is scary so i would say that that's something to look out for too Next question, what do you use to help period pains? My main, main holy grail product is from Sage. It's S-A-J-E. I think it's called Sage Wellness. It is a period oil, period essential oil. You rub it on your lower abdomen, your ovaries, stomach area. You can do your whole stomach if you are like really in pain, but that stuff works wonders. Other than that, like Midol, if I'm really bad, but seriously, that essential oil, it works. And sure, maybe it's a placebo, but I'll be up at 2 a.m. with like really bad period cramps and I can't even fall asleep. I'm in a fetal position. I put that stuff on and I can fall asleep. I don't have pains. I keep that in my apartment and in my car. And I love that stuff. So definitely check out Sage Wellness. They have um, Peppermint Halo for when you have headaches. They have Gutsy for when you have a stomach ache. They have Fortify to put on your chest when you have a cough. I really, really love their products and actually think that they do something for me. I really try not to take medication and pills and just different things like that. So essential oils is the way to go. Don't knock it till you try it you little haters of, you know, essential oils and stuff. (laughs) Last question for this episode is how to handle a heartbreak. Oh my gosh, I would say the first three to five days, stay in bed, stay home, cry, eat ice cream, order your favorite foods, really just sulk and don't text him and don't call him and just feel all those feelings. Let yourself be sad. Don't go out that first night and go crazy and drink your feelings away or get so high. Just be alone with some food. Let your friends come over, whatever. But aside from like that first week, you really will be able to pick yourself back up. It's hard to do. It kind of just like comes naturally to us, I feel like, because girls feel feelings so early on and guys are kind of on that third week damn i'm really missing her and then by that third week the girls are finally feeling like themselves again and they're so confident and understanding their worth and then that's where guys are trying to come back so i would say just let yourself feel those feelings it's okay to be sad and be upset and write in your journal and all those texts that you want to send to him put it in your notes and you'll be okay if you really want to text him go ahead but always just wait till they reach out. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching this episode. I will see you guys next Wednesday with a new episode. Bye, guys. Love you. You've been listening to the Jordan Jones Podcast. Jordan's passion is to inspire, relate, and give you that much-needed one-hour escape from life's everyday struggles. Your family, and we're so glad you're here. Make sure to like, rate, review, and subscribe. We'll be back soon. But in the meantime, find us on YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram at Jordan Jones. J-O-R-D-Y-N. This production is brought to you by Straw Hut Media, hosted by Jordan Jones, produced by Ryan Tillotson, edited by Daniel Ferreira, additional production help by Carolyn Mendoza, Ali Ahmed, and Samir Gonchi. Keep shining bright like the diamond you are, and see you next time on the Jordan Jones Podcast.